brief message from your friendly neighborhood editing Jordan. We tend to try to keep things pretty PG-13 around here, but this is an improv podcast. So who knows what we're going to say. Sometimes we throw in some swearing, some sexual content, and some violence. So as a general warning, viewer discretion is advised. Also to be noted, the opinions stated about a certain tabletop role-playing game are just that, our opinions. We love the game and we like talking about it. So any criticisms are really just all in good fun. That being said, wizards, please hire us. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Yeah, would you look at that? There we go. Woo! Oh, hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Mario. Hello, Mario. I don't remember how the rest of it goes. I I just know the one phrase. I know that it's like a lot of buildup with Mario being an extremely stereotypical Italian man. And then he goes, here's my brother Luigi. He's going to tell you something. I don't remember. Isn't it about like taxes? It's something that's not part of the Mario I thought it franchise. Was like, I thought it was like sex ed. That might <laughs> That's worse, honestly. I, uh-huh. I also hate that. What in the world? I mean, I know what you're referencing, but what happened? <laughs> um, I, that's not what we're talking about at all today. <laughs> <Ben's>, <laughs> <It's me. laughs> I was just going to tell you that I decided to take the spell suggestion. Oh, that's going to be great. And you suggested that we talk about Mario sex ed. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Nat One Podcast, a.k.a. Nope, because nope, you're not going to want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertusa. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. Yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) He's using his powers for evil. Get him. (laughs) Oh. What are you going to do? You can't wah this who. Oh, but I can. I also got a new cantrip. Yeah? Mending. Mending what? You know. <laughs> because of the I, implications. I don't. That's that's why I asked. <laughs> you ever seen that video of that guy that hangs upside down on a, on some jungle gym bars and then he starts banging his head on the end of it <laughs> yeah. over and over again? That's yeah. what the mending... That... Is that your somatic components is repeatedly bashing your skull into the item you're trying to mend? I feel like that's their uh, somatic components. You know what I mean? What else are the oh. men going to ding? <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> Whew. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back to the Net One podcast. We don't. Well, we have the we have the recorded intro. We should probably do a new one of those sometime soon. Though we it's should, we need to include Taryn. It's it's yeah. like a year old. Um, but I was about to say, like, we don't do like a little. We don't we don't say our name often. No on the podcast here. No, no. no. But should should we not? You seem very adamant it's a about secret. that. I don't think it is. I, it's like literally right below us, right now, underneath us. There's a button next to it. That, a, a nice big red button that says subscribe. And then I would be very happy if you clicked, but... There's also a like button, which would also be very, very nice if somebody clicked it. Yeah. The more time we spend not talking about what we're going to talk about, the more the watch time just tanks. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> I no, it pretty does. much do. Categorically, <laughs> based on the our YouTube analytics, we got to get into it. <laughs> it's been like 45 seconds. They're fine. We're talking um, about our D and D home campaign. That's what today's topic yeah. is. If that wasn't clear, I don't know how it wouldn't be clear. Obviously, that's what the we're title probably about. says something relative to it. No, I doubt it. it. Does not. I <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> oh, uh, so yeah, we we've alluded several times on the podcast to our home games, and up until well, now now I guess it's not been very recently, um, but within like the last year. We had we had been playing earlier in the year a home game run by Pertusit. Pertusit was our DM. Um, and as has been explained many a time before on this podcast, uh, I was the first DM of the group, and Pertusit then took that mantle for his campaign that he had an idea for, and we played that over the course of several years. And then when he finished up, the idea was we would do another campaign that I was going to conduct again. And so we have gotten back into that. And yeah. the cycle continues once again. The wheel turns. We all went from level 20 back down to level one. 
and so on and so forth. And let me just say it's really depressing when you go from level 20 to level one, because I love starting the new campaign, but God, does it hurt to go from having like over 300 hit points to having like six. <laughs> yeah. Real. Because it's, it's not just for them. I mean, I was a player in the last one, but it's not just for them either. I also have to run stat blocks that have like six hit points. <laughs> Although we're starting to get into territory now where that doesn't have to be the case anymore necessarily, um, as evidenced by our last combat that we just had. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, most of my stuff that I'm running are little duty creatures that can die in usually three to four hits as I'm well. I'm telling you, how, think about how I felt. I went from nearly five digits of HP to one. <laughs> yeah. Oh... I went from having two attacks to having one. And Same. I'm not going to get another one. Eventually you will. I, well, based on normal rules as written, I wouldn't, but I fixed it. <laughs> Bill Dotrieve speech to Bo uh, Boomhauer. Huh? What? <laughs> Exposition, please. Uh, there's a... Speech I've been quoting a lot recently from King of the Hill. Uh, the character Bill Dotrieve gives a speech to Boomhauer when he's depressed. That's basically oh. like when life, life locks you down, yep. get back up. Yep. I, know I what thought you were going to start talking about peeing in the chili again. No, it's, that's no, where I it's the one about leading. the women in the prison. Yes, it's, it's like uh, <laughs> every Saturday I drag this fat old body to the women's prison 20 miles away. I'm going to be the first man they see after 10 or 15 years in there. Uh, am I going to get someone to go home with me? Experience says no, but yeah. am I going to be there so long as I can breathe? It's it's something to that effect. I highly encourage you to look it up. Yep. Oh, he, he also has a line in there about like every day I dig holes and find new ways to fall into them. And what do I do? I crawl back out and do it all <laughs> over again. And I'm just like, what? Keep you in mind, his job is a barber for the army, so I don't know what he meant by that still. He's failing, but with a positive attitude. But well, why does he say every day he's digging holes? I'm pretty sure he was being literal. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe he's just being <laughs> maybe literal. Maybe it's a pastime. Have we ever seen Bill's backyard in the show? People have, have hobbies. Yes. Oh. You see his backyard more than his front yard. Mm, well, I guess anyway. maybe digging the holes in his house. Speaking of digging holes... um. That's right. We sleep in holes now. That's what. That's <laughs> part of our party identity. <laughs> and every day, every <laughs> night, I dig, <laughs> and I sleep in it. We do. And we what sleep do I in do a in pile in a hole. I crawl back out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know where last week discussed everything with with our audience about what happened. Uh, it was during Great Expectations. We talked about like what our expectations were going into this campaign and kind of having played the first session, what we were yeah. looking at going forward. Yeah. Oh, we were, were we still in Aldol then, I assume? Yes. That was that like was only one or two sessions had been done. <laughs> yeah, I think, okay. I think that was the only the first session had happened mm -hmm. at that well, point. Everything blew up twice. We yes. got banished from a city and we also, well, we got banished from a civilization and we also fled from a very large city that we were supposed to stay in for multiple levels, but we left <laughs> immediately. <laughs> so when, to all of you, I mean, even veteran DMs, but really this is directed at new DMs out there, who, you know, you have all these grand aspirations for what you want your players to do. I highly warn you that, and, and, and this has been said time and time again, it's been beaten to death, but it really is true. Your players will always throw you off in some way that you're on that you're not expecting somehow. Uh, this by far for me, in my experience, having run them in one real campaign and one campaign that was fake, but we still did it for like over a year. And another campaign that we also ran off the rails. <laughs> yep. This, I think, is probably the worst case that it's happened out of all of them because in the one where the campaign ended in like three sessions that was it and it was done and we were like over it and it was gone but this one because i've had more experience now i've been prepared to continue it going on but it's happened two times now where i've just been completely 
obliterated, annihilated, gone, reduced to atoms. Everything I had prepared for several levels of content has been bypassed. I would like to point out neither of these instances were my fault. As I thought that they would be because I thought I was going to commit crimes and get us banished. And I was not the one that committed crimes and got us banished. Ooh, you got to be quicker than that. Yeah. I take great pride in what our party has done. <laughs> it's for me, it's, it's a little bit of give and take. Am I disappointed? A little bit. But at the same time, I think it's interesting. Because I, I do like when my players make me have to move quick on my feet and think of new things quickly and piece together. Because obviously I had an idea of what was going to occur when they did these things. But now the timeline is completely thrown off. And what I expected out of the story is going to change probably dramatically because they weren't here when these events were going to happen. And I thought they were going to be here when they did. So... I guess what I'm trying to get at is be flexible, have a little bit of creativity in there. I am always an adamant uh, anti 100% railroading, which I think any DM that is worth their salt really should be. But uh, obviously a little bit of railroading is consistent in there. I always think it's like, it's like 90% flexibility, 10% railroading. Um, but <laughs> they really... <laughs> They really, t they've really been flexing me with this one. They we took over the train and it's no longer on the track. <laughs> All that to say, we blew up two places. We did. We, did. we keep lighting things on fire. We're going to get a reputation. Mm -hmm. They did. They did. They really did. First one, found a group of people hunting one of our party members. Hunting is a strong word. They're Not hunters. inaccurate, neither. <laughs> uh... Tried Searching to lay a, for I'm your kidding. party member. Uh, laid a trap for them next morning. Uh, cult attacked us before trap could be sprung. <laughs> then also searcher hunters found party member. As a result of one party member explicitly telling them where he exactly was. Exactly where he was. Oh, and, and, and for what reason might they do such a thing? Money. For 200 gold. <laughs> Uh, while also then attempting to fight said hunters and then losing horribly. Uh, <laughs> while the bird cried in the corner. Then having it revealed to us at about level two or three, I don't recall uh, which one it was, that one of the hunters at least was a teens level wizard. And then yeah. hijinks ensued with that where the two people were being pursued in the streets by a teens level wizard. Which was yeah, funny. that was fun. Meanwhile, I was off getting my robo chassis buffed <laughs> by a little goblin named Eag. <laughs> I Y K. I forgot about Eag in the YK. hole. That is a thing that happened. Oh yeah, I stole oh, from a library. Yeah. That was my first crime that I committed. Mm -hmm. I stole from a library. Didn't get caught. Yeah, because yeah, that's what's supposed to off. happen when you steal yeah. things. You're not supposed to get caught. Pulled it off quite well. Yeah, I climbed around in the sewers. But to continue the line of how they ended up leaving, it wasn't actually because they were necessarily in any imminent danger. Correct. It was the hunted felt sad and left. And the party did not want to abandon him. So they went with him. He's a little boy. He can't uh, be he's a the child. Desert. We cannot leave him. <laughs> he would have been fine. No, I'm just experience says yes um you could have you could have strong armed him into staying i bet he just would have been depressed for several levels he, well, he still is that hasn't fixed the problem i got plans within plans i'm zinch pilled out here man i can't i can't have him being depressed but if he remains depressed that's also part of the plan well yeah of course he yeah exactly. it's all part of the great plan it's all part of the plan <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they, they went on the road and they left my city that was based off of a mix between Egypt and Persia and they headed north through the desert. They got attacked by some stuff as, as you do as a DM, when your party's traveling long distances, every once in a while, you give them a little ambush, you know, to you know, oh spice it up, give them a combat or two. We got attacked by a Modron. They... Yes, because of 
Pertuzit's character summoning Not a Modron. Well, you didn't have to say why. But... I didn't give the Modron to him. <laughs> <laughs> it was Wild an magic. accidental Modron. Wild magic sorcerer summoned It's a Modron. heck of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, doing some weird things. Mm-hmm. They continued north, and they got into this new area. After several weeks of travel, they got into this oh, new area of the map. Don't forget the mud method. Oh, yeah, I was going to say the, the mud, mud method is a very important part. Method. Well, there's a mountain range dividing this desert from the next area to the north, which is a dense jungle. And so obviously they have to travel through a mountain pass. And as they're going through there, they encounter some pretty heavy rains. You know, there's some rock slides. It gets pretty muddy up there. And they get to, like, the peak of the pass that they're traveling through. And, boom, random encounter time. Um, The giant mud, I forget what he was called. Was it a mud hulk? Yes, a mud hulk. Because I was about to say, it's not a golem. Um, But there was a mud hulk up there. And he also had with him a bunch of mud methods. It was basically a mud attack like mm. living mud was attacking them when mud attacks and so they had a little mini boss and they had a bunch of ads to deal with and the combat went well they didn't really have much trouble with it in the beginning and middle but then they they got rid of the mud hulk they killed him and so it was just like yeah. three or four mud methods left and uh and then it was wanna... three or four mud methods left. Yeah, do you want to you want to continue explaining? And then it was three explaining? or four mud methods left. Bro- they didn't die. All I can say is I was slightly separated from the group, throwing out my magic missiles. Baldur's Gate three changed me, by the way. Uh, I said this in the group, but I'm gonna say it to the audience. Baldur's Gate three changed me, and I, I'm a magic missile stan. Never before would I have been one, but. Uh, I was casting that all the time, and thus magic or wild magic surges were going off, which then led to more magic missiles, which is really funny. Uh, killing the mud hulk relatively quickly, and there was one mud method that was on me, the weak little sorcerer boy who has the same hit die as the wizards, and the other like four or five of the group is dealing with a singular mud method that they all are missing, and Every I'm dying. Single hit. one of them. <laughs> Is missing their melee attacks. And the mud method, I don't even, let me pull up its stat block. I need to read this. It's not see. that strong. No. It's not, it's not at all. Uh, we were rolling in the single digits. I remember I killed the med method that was attacking me before you guys killed the one that was on you. Yeah. Mud method has an AC of 11. <laughs> yeah, what, that there was like a record number of ones that were rolled during that combat. And, 27 hit points <laughs> and so yeah there was just this one mud method who was defiant mm-hmm. standing proud no one could strike him he was the greatest of his people and <laughs> he was something all right mud method and eventually they they did kill him eventually but it took a much lot. longer than necessary <laughs> Oh, yeah. Then we moved on. Then they moved on. They got over the mountains into the jungle. We found the birds. They met the people of the jungle who this is where the Arakakra in my world come from. This is like their native Mm -hmm. homeland. Didn't know they were in there. Mm -mm. They were an extremely uh, isolationist people and they had various magical means of uh, defending their their homeland and they were known for never allowing outsiders in so what they would always do is they would ambush people and then be like yep we're gonna just escort you to the other side of the forest you don't get to see anything it's kind of like that scene in um in lord of the rings where the elves blindfold the fellowship except for several days and you have to go to the other side of the forest before you're allowed to be unblindfolded and then they release you on the other side um But it just so happened that in one of the party characters' backstories, they were from this place. So then the Arakakra were like, oh, okay, okay, if you're a friend of our people, we'll let you in, we'll let you in. So Mind you, the person that was in our party that was familiar with this was not the person that was in Arakakra, but rather the The orc. orc. Yes, who in their backstory was adopted by this group of Arakakra. 
so they go to the big I don't want to call it capital because these these Arakakra don't really have like cities. They like the are main very village. they're sparsely they're spread out far and wide over the jungle in many many villages. And there's one big main village that their religious temple is at in the center of the jungle. And so that's where the party went. And there there was some intrigue going on. There was some suspicious activities, some strange happenings. We blew it up. We, yeah, it didn't. It, our presence there was not subtle. There was a cult. The cult was messing with the Arakakra. The Arakakra were like, oh, maybe you outsiders could help us. Maybe a pair, maybe some sets of fresh eyes will help us with this problem and figure out some things that we haven't yet. So if you're willing, we'll we'll send you out there and you can find out some stuff for us. So the party did. Found a boat. They found an airship. Burned it. They they engaged in combat on this airship, which I intended to be like a mini dungeon. Uh, it had two levels. It had the upper deck and the lower deck, and they were supposed to kill everyone, presumably, and then rummage around and find clues and, and things in the airship, right? They didn't do that. They <laughs> no, no. We cleared the first deck. That was That was something we actually did. This is yet... Further example of the, your party will always keep you on your toes uh, because they cleared the upper deck, but some of their enemies, some of these cultists that they were fighting got away and they retreated below deck. So the party was obviously like, well, they're probably telling everyone down there that we're up here. So what do we do? I haven't even told anyone. I scouted down there and they were just standing there. Well... You don't know what was going well, to happen yeah, when you went but, down there because of what yeah. happened next, if one of you would like to explain what you all did to deal with the problem. The sad boy cast Grease. Yeah. The, the resident alchemist did, in fact, cast Grease at the, ca cast grease at the bottom of spell. the <laughs> stairs into the ship. The wooden stairs. The wooden stairs. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. So, who decided next to light the grease on fire? My character's afraid of fire. This has never been my fault. Me! <laughs> Listen, they had no way out, as far as we knew. The group decided well, they that they, they should the try mm. to smoke out the cultists. Honestly, Great idea, as far as I'm on, concerned. On paper, with all of the information they knew, it was a good idea. It was a good idea. There wasn't any reason for them to not try something like this. Ha if with the information they knew. But they didn't have every piece of information as to what was happening in the bottom of the ship. Uh, because in my world, it is a mix between high fantasy and sort of like... Um, a little bit of like Warhammer style fantasy where it's like there is early modern black powder technology as well. There's cannons, there's rifles, but it's just kind of like a lot of people are like, why use that if we have magic, right? So that's where the that's where the balance comes in. And this airship just so happened to have a, a cache of black powder weapons on it and a pretty hefty supply of black powder in its armory. So the party is minding their business, pretty much waiting for the underside of the ship to burn itself out. Uh, and then they notice that some of the cultists are escaping because they took a rope out of one of the windows on the back of the ship and are climbing down. So they engage in combat with them for a little bit. Goes a little haywire because they didn't expect them to have guns. <laughs> um, but they, they eventually worked out and they pretty much wiped out the whole group. And then the ship blew up. With several of them on it. Yeah. Two of them almost died. The <laughs> ship on fire. In fact, actually, no. One of them did die outright, if I remember correctly. Yep, mm -hmm. Brandon died. Um, and another was in death saves, but got saved. Mm -hmm. By me, his new god. <laughs> I say that not, as a, not to compliment myself, but because the way my character looked upon receipt. <laughs> Wild magic Yeah. He was visibly glowing 
And I had a third eye. And he had a third eye. <laughs> and I was did. blinding. Like if you yeah, spent yeah. a turn around me, you would get blinded. Yeah. Uh so that that happened. And you might be wondering, how does this make them get banished? Well, it didn't. Um in fact, this this was probably a good outcome. Uh, they eliminated these cultists and they rummaged around in the ruins for what they could find. Got a, still got a little bit of information, but then 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 the next day happened. <laughs> yeah. So the party has been looking around for clues as to what might be motivating this cult, right? No, no, no. Okay, so we had strong suspicion that there were shape changers involved in allowing passage to this hidden part of the temple vault. Yes. So we tried to keep a strong eye on the entrance to the temple vault, which led to somehow Terran casting sea invisibility... And well, see, we were trying to get in there. I know. I just don't even know why you'd ever take that spell. <laughs> but it worked. It well, it kind of worked I, in our favor. It was. I think it really didn't in the end. <laughs> well, yeah, so, it kind of got me killed. Mm-hmm. The temple that, as I mentioned earlier, there's this one big temple in this village. A bunch of elders gather here, uh, Arakakra elders, and there's an inside to the temple. There's obvi- there's like rooms scattered around the temple, but there's one main chamber that you can only get to by going through this staircase that starts at the top of the temple, which is a giant pyramid, and you have to descend down into it. And that staircase collapses upwards. It like becomes a flat surface, and only some people can open it, and the party didn't know how, uh, so they were they were looking around, trying to figure out how. We were going to try to break in, and then we got caught trying to with somebody else trying to break in. <laughs> we, yeah. Uh, Taryn, while they were investigating in the middle of the night, just decided to cast the invisibility. Which I think was a very good idea on the surface. I think it's what happened next that was maybe not great. Well, again, same thing as with the airship. Lighting the fire good. was probably a good idea on the surface. Yes. You just didn't have all the information as to what was about to occur. So, Taryn casts the invisibility. No invisible mechanisms or anything, but there is, in fact, a person there. An invisible person who's just hanging out, watching them. And when they see, because Taryn pointed at them, (laughs) that... The party, which at this point was not the whole party, the party was split doing several different things. It was just me and Taryn. When they see that they had been noticed, they were like, okay, I'm out. And they started running. And that would have been the end of it. Except it wasn't. Because Taryn tried to cast sleep on them. Well, that didn't work. And this invisible individual was not happy with the fact that Taryn tried to cast sleep on them. When Taryn also tried to cast fairy fire on them as well. That's when the attack started, was when Taryn got fairy fire off. So the person turned around and attacked Taryn's character. This then led to a scuffle between two-thirds of the party and this person on the backside of the temple and a lot of climbing which resulted in the very end with Caiaphas wild magic casting fly not intentionally he cast a spell which then resulted in him casting wild magic as an effect of or blah 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 yeah he cast a spell that procked his wild magic which made him then also cast fly on a random creature which I designated via a coin flip basically if i remember correctly was the hostile individual so they started flying away through various magical means the party gave pursuit the party being just jordan's character and this individual proceeded to crit very hard on <laughs> jordan's character and instantly killed them woohoo 
and they fell to the ground because they were up in the sky. They were flying when this happened. So they were, they fell down to the ground. There was panic. But in that panic, something else also occurred with, again, because of wild magic. Produce it, if you would explain. Yeah, I got the one thing that says you can teleport 30 feet as a bonus action every round. And I was so happy to see this. <laughs> if you know almost everything that allows teleportation, short-term teleportation anyway, uh, in d d it says you teleport to a point you can see. However, on the wild magic teleportation, since it doesn't say that you cast a spell, it just says you teleport 30 feet to an unoccupied space. Uh, actually, I don't even know if it says unoccupied it, space. It but, just says you teleport 30 feet to, yeah. I think it does say to an unoccupied space, but it doesn't say that you can see. It doesn't it say that you, you can teleport. see, which meant that I could go into the vault because I knew where the door was. I just had to teleport past the door. Yes. Which worked. <laughs> yes. And then I went he in there. So. And I found some there. stuff. He found several things. And then I was stuck. He found some strange items that were not really like related to each other, other than mm -hmm. the fact that some of them were weapons. Mm -hmm. Um and then the teleport effect ran out. Yeah, one minute. After he had been teleporting in and out of other locked rooms within this chamber. Grabbing things. Grabbing things. So then he was stuck between the first door and the outside. And he couldn't open the first door. He didn't know how to open the first door. So then he was stuck down there. Yeah. And so the Aarakocra... Obviously, after this scuffle began, oh, I fa we failed to mention when the fight happened, the artificer of the group started screaming loudly that there was an intruder in the temple and yeah. brought the entire temple onto high alert. Yeah, it's giving he's escaping from American Horror Story season two. <laughs> um, So the Aarakocra now, like some of them go down and they help the dead party member who gets revived. Uh, Some of them go up. And because there was screaming that there was an intruder in the temple, they open up the inner the inside to the temple and a bunch of them go down to make sure there's no one in the temple. There was someone in the temple. Oops. So they go in there and they get to them, him, produce its character. And they're like, okay, we're just going to check all the rooms to make sure everything's where it should be. You stay right here. We're going to leave some guards with you. Was not. <laughs> Everything was not where it should be. <laughs> it was on his person <laughs> so then they were like did you take stuff you weren't supposed to take I said yeah <laughs> so then he got in a little bit of trouble mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and up until this point in the background there had been a little thing going on where some of the Aarakocra did not take to kind of like a, a super, super isolationist faction of the elders. Did not take too kindly to the elders who had basically allowed the party in to do all this stuff. Because they were like, they're outsiders. We shouldn't trust them at all. So they took this opportunity to put the party on trial and uh, use the evidence of theft to be like they have bad intentions get them out of here we don't want them here anymore it the worked. party was the party was quite upset with this understandably um but the evidence was stacked against them and they were banished yeah from the Aarakocra lands including the native person yes Yes. The, the orc raised by Aarakocra got banished as well. Mm -hmm. But I this was after this... they were uh, questioned of where their loyalty stood and they doubled down and said with their friends who stole. Which mm -hmm. is the so. right answer. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I will no, say was. I was kind of afraid with because because we had heard that some people weren't happy about us being there i think the stealing kind of took center stage because i was really afraid whenever ren died that it was going to be a very big problem the person that fell out of the sky was definitely not the same person who they were interacting with before yes because that's that something we failed to mention is that jordan's character is a changeling yeah i thought that was going to be an issue and it wasn't no it was like oh thank god 
it was a distraction with the theft and so it went under the radar and nobody cared yeah so we left yeah so they left and then they popped out on the other side of the jungle which is mm -hmm. the, still the direction they were intending to head in all this mm -hmm. time so they're still on the right path uh, or at least the path they believe is the right path and uh yeah somewhere. those were the so far it's been several sessions since and they haven't managed to get kicked out of the next place they went to so never say never so far i got high hopes for them guys i think they're finally out of their growing period well right now we're town darlings because we just cleared out the knoll infestation yeah that's when it all goes wrong. After we become darlings is when it all goes wrong. Check. After we think we are darlings is when it all goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can always light this town on fire and move on to the next one. Uh, I, I love that that's become our brand because also, as I mentioned, my character is afraid of fire. So me, Jordan, is like, hell yeah, burn it all down. But then there's party contention because my character's like, please stop lighting things on fire. <laughs> I keep lighting things on fire. It's I kind know. of my I thing. It. Honestly, it's like my thing. Even before the campaign started, it was kind of my character's thing. I yeah. dig it. I'm here for it. I support this 100%. Straight uh, up, I feel like people don't forget, but in session zero, a thing told me that I should be called Flamebringer. Yeah. Yep. I forgot about that. See? <laughs> and so far, uh, I, I two forget. years ago. <laughs> I'm I'm accidentally delivering on that. It's just I fires. never forget. The people a thing I think people don't think about is fire is really good at burning stuff. <laughs> so you know it's really oh. flammable? Most things. <laughs> exactly. When you know that your enemies are going to be in a central location, the best possible thing I can think to do is put fire in there. Yeah, yeah. we committed a war crime. We committed two war crimes. Fire it's true. is quite effective. Our next thing was to, we, we were going to a place, got attacked by gnolls. It became personal. They ate when, our horses. They did. They ate those horses, man. Thankfully, we have an orc. Um, <laughs> we went to the nearby town, talked to the local government. And they said, "You want to help kill some gnolls for money?" And we were like, "We would kill the gnolls for free." At this point, <laughs> uh, no, I would have required money. <laughs> you got money from the gnolls. <laughs> I did. Um, found where the gnoll den was, and we were like, "This would look so much better if it was on fire." There and is. We went back to town, it's found so the scary. hunters. Yeah. Yeah, they re get this, guys. They <laughs> You remember those guys that they ran from in the very first town that they were in that they were supposed to be from in for several levels? They ran into them again here. They <laughs> Mhm. Mm but it's okay because like a uh, like two dolls, we started picking them up and made them kiss between our character that didn't like them and the people they were hunting. So they got along. We really Ren did that. <laughs> but it was good enough. Then we went and found some gnolls. And when asked how we might proceed about like laying siege to their big, big settlement, their den, they asked Brandon, Dylan's character asked me, and was like, Do you have any ideas? And I was like, mm, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know how feasible it would be, but maybe if we could construct some sort of bomb. <laughs> and then immediately the characters were like, Oh, I know what to do. And so we made a bomb. <laughs> they did make a bomb a corpse bomb sorry a poop bomb <laughs> <laughs> they um they were in a town that did not have a sewer system so in such a society what is one to do to dispose of sewage well they dump it all somewhere Shit so they asked well they'd actually they didn't ask they just kind of looked around <laughs> Looked around, threw money at the problem, and left. They found the guy who was, like, the garbage man, but for sewage. And he was like, yeah, if you give me money, I'll just let you have it. <laughs> and so they basically bought some sewage and uh, used that as the base for their bomb. And they constructed a, a little fake cart that... They left out in the open because the gnolls had been known to uh, raid carts and passerbys for their things. And the gnolls took the bait and took the cart and they put it right in the middle of their little settlement. And then one of the hunters who was now working with them 
uh, shot a fireball at it. And it fired. Ball. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Great success. And then they spent the last two sessions fighting the gnolls. Mm -hmm. Woohoo. I didn't get a final tally, but there was at least over 50, if not over 100 enemies and all that. There were a lot. I didn't count. It was a very complicated combat uh, that could have been a lot more streamlined than it was. But it worked out in the end. And that's what matters. Apartment no one complex. Died. I find it quite easy, actually. Did, did do you? Did you? Well, well, I guess you were the one who all you had to do was control you and your NPC that you had with you. <laughs> Until the end, I was looking peachy. Basically, until the boss are- boss of the arena showed up. Honestly, yep. same. I was, like, fine. I did get a couple hits, but for the most part, they just kept missing. I had, like, one the, spell slot I, consumed. No HP lost. I was having one of those days, guys. <laughs> audience. Where, like... It's just one of those 70 days. 70 to 80% of all my rolls with the gnolls were in the single digits. They were just whiffing the party. They were not touching them at all. Um, Which, gnolls are supposed to be kind of cannon foddery enemies anyways. So the whole purpose of this combat was supposed to be absolute horde of gnolls that are easy to kill, but there's a lot of them. Uh, And that's why the combat took about two sessions to do. It was basically a session and a half was the whole combat. Um, Yeah. And yeah, I, I threw in some funny little mechanics in there that I thought would spice it up a little bit in in the middle. I made some of the gnolls enraged. I made them have bloodlust. And then at the very end, a big old champion, big old huge knoll comes out and he's angry because these guys are killing all of his brothers and sisters. So he whacks them with a big old flail. And a boulder. And a oh, boulder. Of Uogu. And my party. <laughs> they do this thing. They do this thing, guys, <laughs> when they get bored, when we've been in like a combat for several hours, where they just start. We use the DD Beyond map function. It is quite handy. And they just do this thing where they start renaming the tokens. I will argue that that made it easier towards the end to tell who was attacking what. <laughs> true uh you're you're lucky that it wasn't one of the combats though where i did have everything ordered because then i probably (laughs) would have been upset that people were changing the names of things because i would have had it written down in initiative what they were called um so you picked the right combat to do it in i guess is what i'll say but yeah, they just start renaming things. And he, I'm guilty of this too. I'm laying it on them a lot, but I even I get into it a little bit when they start doing it because like the champion, he was called a champion of Yenogu because the god of the gnolls is Yenogu. He comes out and they had been renaming other things up until this point. I'm trying to figure out who they is because it's not me. And so, it, it had to be multiple people. It was, so I knew I, which they one I is I'm properly. positive it was two people. Um, I think it was Dylan. I think it was me and Dylan. I'm pretty sure it was Dylan as well. So, at some point, someone renames it from Champion of Yunogu to Double O Uhampion <laughs> of Unogu. Uinogu. Uinogu. <laughs> and everyone thought that was really funny. <laughs> it was. I it also is. thought it was really funny. <laughs> I didn't mess with the names, Levi. I would never. I did. I'm I named still, it to devour I'm Earth still 50, at some point. 50 on you. I'm not sure. You. I didn't. I told you. You're a good liar. I, I can't was trust doing you. My other stuff in the corners of the map. Uh, remember? He was, yeah, he, he was, was doing drawing other dicks stuff. on the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but I was doing it not with the draw tool, but with the uh, area of effect Jeez. tool. That's yeah. That's why yeah. I liked it. That's <laughs> so. <laughs> so then I rename it back to the proper thing, and then somewhere along the line. Someone renames it to Champion of Garfield because someone had renamed Taryn's character to Nermal. That was me. Very <laughs> fitting, by the way. Exceptionally fitting. I ca- I need to change his name to that in the group chat. I was going to last night, but I forgot I'm going to do that. someone renamed it to Champion of Garfield because it had just beaten him 
who death saves. Well, first I named it the Devourer of Normal, and then somebody changed it to the Champion of Garfield. <laughs> so, then I changed it to Champion of Garnogu. Mm-hmm. And that is what it remained until its inevitable defeat. But yeah, um, and that that's where they ended. I mean, there were there was a little bit more after that, but it's kind of gross. Mm-hmm. Um, they they killed the mom. Yeah, there was a big gross knoll who was birthing all of the knolls, which is a little bit different from regular knoll lore. Uh, if you guys regular know how knolls lore. are born in Freyrune lore, which is when a hyena gores something to death and like wallows in its gore and eats it, then it becomes a knoll. I hate it. I did a little, I did kind of a cross between that and my own take on it, which is uh, there's a knoll, there's like a, it's kind of like how insects have like a bee queen. Mm-hmm. There was a knoll queen and uh, she basically eats gore and viscera and stuff and that produces. No, like the more she more mass she eats, the more she can produce baby gnolls. And uh yeah, it was uh it was not pretty. Mm. And they they You'll never they, guess what we did with it. <laughs> I really don't think we should explain much in depth what you did with it, oh, honestly. No, I've been lighting it on fire. We lit Burn. the thing. Oh, okay. Fire. They did that <laughs> after the it it was deceased by the time we, they, we lit it 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 lit the fire, mm-hmm. and, yeah, they lit it on fire to say the least. And yeah, and they they looted some stuff the uh the hunters which were here the whole reason they teamed up with our party of intrepid adventurers is because they were like we're looking for someone and we I think the gnolls have kidnapped them i want to know who it is so they... we're gonna try to find them and we're gonna help you because we gotta fight the gnolls as well enemy of my enemy and they did they did in fact find the person they were looking for uh in the knoll caves they were chained up in there along with some other people mm-hmm. so yeah, and then the party returned, and they got paid, and then they went to do all their stuff. And we got to level up. Let's go gambling. And they leveled up. Level five. Woo. Level five. They're level five now. I what got did you know? We're basically gods. They did a combat with like over a hundred enemies at level four. Forget the part where they had help from a level fifteen wizard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and whatever. We went Baptiste down like three is. times. True. He's a level six fighter. He's okay. not he's not much better than you guys. He's just a little bit better. Who have fooled me with his performance in that fight? <laughs> Mans was killing without being touched. Until uh Terran nuked him. Mm-hmm. That uh, was again, that was part of the just Knowles weren't hitting anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. It makes me think of Warhammer indeed. When you think of like when you use orcs, it's a giant horde faction, but they hit on five up in melee, yep. which is yep. god awful. <laughs> Yep. That's what the gnolls were. They did their job. They did do their job. And some, the party was very adamant that they were going to try, especially Caiaphas. Pertusit's character, Caiaphas, really wanted to make sure that none got away. Mm-hmm. Some did get away. <gasps> there was the gone. other settlement. We'll we'll potentially clean things up. Depends on uh, what Ashlyn's character wants to do next. Yeah, we as, can either go and do that ourselves or have somebody else do that. As Pertusit's character said in the last session, they did cut off the head of the snake. They got the thing that was producing the gnolls at a rapid rate. Yeah. So now, they won't replenish. Yeah. For and that's Unless where... it's like bees where they can make a new queen. That that would be not great. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's eventually where... they'll come back, right? Like, that's just how gnolls be. It may yeah, be. be. Who knows that you the group hasn't really investigated so much as to how the gnolls got there. Rather, they've just been more concerned with getting rid of them. True. Uh, meat god. So, but yeah, that's where the meat god uh, they last were. That's where our party left off. And what's our party name? Currently, uh, they they have revealed to me their plan. Mm-hmm. Which is that they every time they accept work as like hired help. They're going to use a different party name mm-hmm. every time. We might be able to reuse depending on how far away we are from the last time we used one. So you the know. first one they have selected was the Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. That was their first group name that they decided on. Yeah. It was chosen because it would inspire confidence in, in our contractors. Yeah. It tells them already who we are. 
just with one word. And they did do a good job. And they were invited by the contractor after the contract was completed to continue killing gnolls if they would like to. We are the good fellas. But that's where they were last. Yeah. And so... What? What? All right. Moving forward. <laughs> uh, I got the cantrip mending, so we're going to see what I can do with that now. Yeah? You you mentioned this at the beginning. <laughs> because mending. I wonder if it's going to work on me. <laughs> we can see. The if description I... of the spell says it can physically repair a magic item or construct. Are you a construct? Yes. Hell yeah. So then do we have to figure out how many hit points? I'm going, game? my assumption is that it won't heal me, but if I want to cut a prison pocket into myself and then put something in there, I can mend it up. You're going to rob the birds again, aren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a plan I had back when I was stuck in that, that basement area of the pyramid, but I didn't have mending. And I was like, dang, why don't I have mending? Why do I have freaking shape water? Now you have mending and you won't get caught stealing things. Exactly, because it'll be in me. Somewhere. Okay. I... <laughs> you didn't watch JoJo Part 6, alright? Listen. I did not, but it... You, you still have things inside of you that you need to be undamaged in order to function. I just, I, I no, want you to fine. be aware of that. There... So you're going to have to be careful when cutting into yourself. There's a character. An True. There's a character from Jojo part six who purposefully got bad breast implants. So that way she can slip things inside a cut that she put on herself to get into the breast implant and bring them into prison. So are you going to get but breast that's... implants? And yeah, that's an addition Basically. that <laughs> is not necessarily like you don't have that addition yet is what I'm saying. Yet. Well, I was going to say, what do you think I'm doing next session? I already told you. Mm. He's getting breast implants. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm trying to make use of spells that don't often get used. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, mending takes a minute to cast. Yeah. And then I also took suggestion because, as we know, in D&D, &D, almost all... What do you even want to call those? The, like... Mental manipulation spells are garbage because mm -hmm. they have very, they're very limited, so they very end up limited. not working very well. But I think suggestions are right. I get 25 words and it lasts up to eight hours. With co oh, I have to concentrate on it. Well, and suggestion paired with a couple of good charisma checks from two of the talkers could probably do a lot of damage. That's what I'm hoping. It's a wisdom save, which isn't ideal, but I mean, everything like that is usually a wisdom save. My DC is 16 now because our proficiency bonus went up, and mm -hmm. it's a second level spell, which, as we play with, so for those 17. of you at home. It... Right? No. <laughs> I'm not playing a caster in this. I don't have to remember how the spell save DC stuff works. It'd be 18. 18, okay. <laughs> it's 16 plus 2. If you I... guys could see the look <laughs> that produced it, gave Jordan. It was one level up from one, so that's where my brain went the seven. Whoa! <laughs> no, the R table rule for spell DCs is you also add the spell level cast to the save, mm. which my makes higher level spells every level above one. That's much what more was. difficult to save on. Yeah. As they should be. Also, also at this level, cantrip damage went up for me. So my mind sliver now does 2d6. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah, my sneak one up. Good. I got uncanny dodge too. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. And I got another spell slot of second level. So I have three of those now. You guys are in the territory that people regularly call prime D&D &D territory. About level 5 to 10. Is yeah. where you get all your really cool new stuff. Usually there's something nice every level that you can be expecting on the next level up. Makes it really mm -hmm. fun and engaging for gameplay. 
I do feel like oh. I have to tell the people at home if they're like wondering how I'm level five, but I have this does not add up to them. These, these <laughs> things I have. My first level is warlock, and I have four level sorcerer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> because he it wanted works. to have wisdom proficiency in his saving throws, and I wanted uh, some some proficiencies. I wanted some proficiencies like armor, because I went hexblade yeah. warlock. Because of Ivy Sorcerer isn't very good. No. And it's, it's very like weak. subjecting himself to pain. Yes. <laughs> we also got some magic items that we divvied up. I got a bag of stealing. I mean a bag of holding. Yeah. I also got a bag of holding, if you know what I mean, with that mending spell. No. <laughs> you have inner mechanisms that are gonna get in the way. I don't know that. Unless you get breast implants. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a dumb have bit. you guys seen that german meme that's of him talking about thanksgiving and he's yes. like have a happy that that i'm thinking of that with caiaphas where <laughs> jordan if you haven't seen it he's like have a good thanksgiving guys and he's like on his phone and then he pans over and there's a mirror behind him and his butt is huge yeah, And so that's what I'm imagining with Caiaphas right now is he doesn't get breast implants. Just one day you're all going to disperse and he's going to come back. And he's going to look like Squidward in that one episode of Spongebob where he eats all the Krabby Patties. Real. And he's well, going to be like, what guys? I don't. <laughs> I feel like you guys forget because I never use it. I have the spell Disguise Self so I, I can always at any time for an action have breast implants. But but those I, won't so be really well. Not special. How does the sky self? No, the sky self doesn't like morph your body. Mm -mm. No, it just gives it's the illusion. Yeah, because yeah. there is also one that actually does morph change your body. shape. Alter, yeah. or is it alter it's, self I or is it, it change shape? Maybe both. I think it, it might be. Both. <laughs> I don't know, but th there is one that does that. Yeah, or just be able to do that as a base feature. And so then, when Kyvis gets that, he can have real breast implants. Mm -hmm. For a limited amount of time. <laughs> also, oh. I gotta say, I've been loving Vortex Warp, by the way. I, Vortex Warp is sick. That's how I died. Yeah. That is something as well. Now, my players have gotten to experiment with... Because also, when we played with Pertusit, our party was not a caster-heavy party at all. We were a very martial party... Uh, we had half casters because we had a paladin, we had a ranger, but we didn't even have an actual uh, full caster mm -hmm. for the entire. I mean, we technically did for a little bit because we had a cleric, but then that cleric mm -hmm. became a barbarian eventually. Um, because we were also we played a little fast and loose with virtually a half caster because we also had a rogue yeah. wizard fighter. Yeah. Yeah. We play a little fast and loose, and if we've done it several times before where, like, our characters will change subclasses based off of story stuff, or even in the case of Jordan's character, they change their entire class eventually from a uh, cleric to a barbarian. So we do stuff like that from time to time, and we ended up with no full casters in the party. So it has been nice now that we're playing this one. We do have two. We have two full casters. Um and a warlock who i think is well no no he's planning to multi-class isn't he mm -hmm. so he so, won't be either yeah no so but we do have two full casters so they get to play around with a lot of the spells that have been had been introduced while we were playing that campaign in stuff like strixhaven and in stuff like tasha's that we Fizz didn't bands. really yeah fizz bands that we didn't really get to do much with because we didn't have full casting <laughs> I like Vortex Warp. Vortex Warp is a very nice spell. It's very cool. I'm using it what I feel like is a unique way. Maybe maybe it's not. But it's a spell that lets you move somebody, move a creature up to 90, no, 60 feet. You can move them from where you snag them and the distance you can snag them from is 90 feet. And I think the way the spell is written is it's intended that you're supposed to grab an enemy creature, but then they have to make a saving throw or else they don't get snagged. So what I've been doing instead, because you can always choose to fail a saving throw, is snag my teammates and yeet them somewhere. But I've used that, I've, I tried to discuss that with Jordan before the campaign even started. I was going to be like, I'm just going to yeet you around when we need it. <laughs> um, and I'm fine is, with that. I've got mobile. If I can get even more 
<laughs> distance, yeah. give it to me. And that's that's how the whole dying in midair situation happened. I didn't expect yeah. that part to happen. Uh <laughs> honestly, I'm still fine with it because I think it was so freaking cool and I mm -hmm. got good art out of it because it mm -hmm. was so cinematic and I love it. True. <laughs> And that was the first time I'd used that spell too, because so, so it was just like, "Run! I need you to reach them." It was very much Charles B. Tall, but if I had magic, <laughs> what's <laughs> Charles B. Tall? Run! Go get him! <laughs> Blinks oh, ninety man. feet in the air. Um, <laughs> but last session, I got to use it whenever the giant Uhampian got uh, Nermal. Uh, I, Nermal was in death saves, not dead, not a, an object. <laughs> so I was able to be like, "Nermal, come here." And then Nermal appeared before me, and then I healed him with a bonus action, and I was like, okay, good luck, Nermal, while the Hampian was still right by us. What? No, you were like, go save Ren, and then on Terran's turn, he moved away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember he started moving away, and everyone immediately started being like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, everyone started being like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then he was like, I cast Healing Word. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From a distance. Yeah. That was one of those few moments where we we <laughs> no, all did right. just we, we just underestimated Terran's competence <laughs> when he, he really did correct. just know what he was doing. Uh, yeah, oh. I don't have much expectation left for now, like what I intend on doing or anything. I'm just leveling up, getting stuff. Uh I don't know. We're we're just gonna keep doing our thing. I. I, I want to just keep going moving forward as as a player. Produce it wants to just keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if we're going to do that or if we're going to go back to the forest because of Ashlyn. We'll do whatever, obviously. I think Caiaphas is more prone to going to the jungle as a character. But I'm here for whichever. <laughs> as long as I get to kill stuff, get levels. Maybe money. Definitely I got new. Money. I got armor now. I got heavy armor proficiency. My strength score went up by one, and my strength modifier went up by one as a result. Heck yeah. And when I get this new armor, my AC is going to be three points higher, I think, if not four points higher. Actually, I can also get Brandon to buff my armor and make it another point higher. I'm not, I'm certainly not going to be an HP tank, so I need to be an HP <laughs> You need to be, yeah. <laughs> my HP, my maximum HP is 29 as of the last level up. What is mine? I don't remember. Four. I already know that I was at 25 at the last fight, and the boulder would have one-shot me. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, you already have about a third of the hit points of my other party's fighter, who has consistently rolled below average on their hit points for like 10 of their 12 levels. Rip. They're not above 100, and they're level uh, they're level 14. Well, see, this is why I don't roll. This is why <laughs> I just take the average. <laughs> oh, not that it matters, though. <laughs> <laughs> that average on a uh, what do sorcerers have a d6? Yes. Yeah. Three. Mm hmm. But hey, yeah, look, they have 37 hit points. Yeah. What about the you, barbarian Jordan? was not present for the end of the session, so she mm -hmm. hasn't leveled up yet. So we don't know how many hit points the the certified group HP tank has yet. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations now, Jordan? Um, honestly, do you, think I... do you think it's more likely the party will go back to the forest, or do you think they might just continue? Uh -huh. on? It's That's what I'm trying to think of. I think it's it depends on how strongly Ashlyn's character feels about going back because yeah. I can see it going either way because I my character is of the opinion of we were trying to help help you. You were not very helpful in helping us help you because that, that was part of the thing that came up whenever we had our interrogation mini court case thing is that they had withheld information and we didn't know it was in the temple in the first place and it would have been relevant to know since the cult was attacking them. And so there was a little point of contention. So I'm of the opinion of they brought this upon themselves. Uh, we tried to help and they spat in our faces. So f screw them. Um, mm. But I don't, if Sylvie really, really wants to go back, I'm not going to fight him. I'm not going to fight her on it. I don't know. Caiaphas. I was going to say is a good character, but that's not inherently true. <laughs> mm -mm. Um. But the way he is, he needs 
the party to like him. So he's going to do what he can to have Sylvie like him the most. So if she shows pretty much any inkling of wanting to go, he's going to push for everyone to go. Because he wants to be in her side, so that way she'll be on his side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also think that, at least for my character, they're still really focused on trying to figure out what the hell is going on with our party in general anyway. And every time we stop, it's a stopping point in finding more information and trying to fix what's going on. True. So backtracking may be like a, ooh, we kind of already exhausted that resource, didn't we? Yeah. Also, did we distribute that loot as you intended, or did you not have an intention? Yes, we didn't ask that last night. The only thing that I had an intention for was for the axe to go to the barbarian. So okay. uh, I didn't really intend for anything else to go to anyone specifically. I, I tried to make it like general utility stuff so that anyone could really use them. Yeah. Okay. I was just Columbus. Yeah, they got they got some loot after killing the gnolls. Mm-hmm. Some funny uh, items. Not even funny items, really. No. Just, I used a whole bow. That was fun. You did use a null bow. It's just a gross looking bow. It's kind of gangly. Well, shoot, folks. I guess that about does it, huh? Yeah. I mean, this was just us rambling. Didn't about even our home explain game. about how. It was relevant that we climb up and out of holes every day. Do you want to? Yeah, we just sleep there because we don't have like Layman's tiny hut or anything. So that's in our cart that doesn't work because they ate our horses. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not gonna explain. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to. If you really like our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on YouTube, and look for us on Spotify. If you'd like to see us continuing to do more fun projects in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find our page linked in the description above all of our other social media links. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and check out some more skit-based content and things like that, check us out on Twitter and TikTok. Links in the description. And hey, thanks.